discuss about the electronic transitions of UV visible spectroscopy. So let's start. What are ultraviolet and visible radiations? Ultraviolet and visible radiations are electromagnetic radiations and they are part of electromagnetic spectrum. Ultraviolet radiations, the range is 180 to 400 nanometer. These radiations lie in between X-rays and visible rays on electromagnetic spectrum. These are short wavelength rays. Uh, they, are, they have short wavelength than the visible rays. That means they have more energy than the visible rays. These radiations are part of sunlight. Visible radiations. The range is 400 to 800 nanometer. These radiations lie in between ultraviolet and IR radiations on an electromagnetic spectrum. These radiations are visible to human eye. That means we can see these radiations. Other electromagnetic radiations such as uh, X-rays, cosmic, uh, cosmic rays, gamma rays, IR, UV or radio waves, we cannot see them. But the only radiations which can we see is visible radiations and that's why the name visible. 43% of sunlight on earth is visible light. Visible radiations have longer wavelength than ultraviolet radiations and they have less energy than the UV rays. When we pass visible radiations or simply sunlight through a prism, we'll get a, uh, totally seven different colors. That means the visible radiations are further divided into seven different colors. That is total a rainbow is there. Why UV visible spectroscopy is so important? UV visible spectroscopy is extensively used as analytical technique in pharmaceutical industry. There are many reasons. Among that first is accuracy. UV visible spectroscopy is highly accurate technique. It is generally used for quantitative analysis. That means determination of concentration or determination of percentage purity and all. It gives highly accurate result. Easy to use. The UV visible spectrophotometer is much simple instrument and it is much easy to use. Small amount of sample is required. Uh, in uh, UV visible spectroscopy, the analysis is carried out with very small amount of sample. Uh, the sample requirement is generally in milligrams or even in micrograms. The technique is so sensitive that it can detect the sample in nanograms also. Fourth advantage is quick analysis. UV visible spectroscopy is a simple technique and uh, the analysis time required is very short. The analysis is fast here. Now due to these advantages, UV visible spectroscopy is much popular in pharma industry. Interaction of UV visible radiations with organic molecule. After absorption of UV visible light, electrons of organic molecule jump from ground state to singlet excited state. Now, uh, if uh, this is the energy of UV visible light, after absorption of UV visible light, the electrons of organic molecule jump from ground state to the singlet excited state. And this is due to absorption of UV visible radiation, their energy. Now, as we know, uh, electrons are jumping from ground state to excited state. That means uh, electronic transitions are involved here. Now, before going to the electronic transitions, one should know which different types of electrons are present in an organic molecule. So, first type of electron is sigma electron. Sigma electrons are the electrons associated with sigma bonds. That means single bond or saturated bond like carbon-carbon single bond, carbon-hydrogen single bond and uh, such that. Now sigma electrons require much higher energy for excitation 
than the UV energy of UV visible radiations. So that's why the uh, excitation of sigma electrons is not possible with absorption of UV visible light. That's why the compound uh, with only sigma electrons or fully saturated compound with no heteroatom, these compounds will not absorb uh, UV visible radiations. Instead of that, they absorb vacuum UV radiations. Vacuum UV radiations means um, prior to the UV radiations, the range of vacuum UV is 10 to 180 nanometer and sigma electrons require that higher energy. Next electron is pi electrons. These electrons are associated with pi bond that means unsaturated bond like carbon-carbon double bond, carbon-carbon triple bond or aromatic ring like benzene or other ar unsaturated aromatic rings. So uh, the pi electrons associated with pi bond or unsaturated bond require less energy for excitation. They can absorb UV visible light and get excited. N electrons. N electrons are associated with um, heteroatoms like uh, hydrogen, like oxygen, nitrogen, or halogen, or any other heteroatom. These electrons are not associate. Uh, these electrons are not uh, forming bond within the molecule, and that's why they are called as non-bonding electrons. They require less energy for excitation. They can absorb UV visible radiations and get excited. Now we'll go for electronic orbitals. Sigma bonding orbital, pi bonding orbital, and n non-bonding orbital. These are less energy orbitals, and uh, they are ground state orbitals. Sigma antibonding orbital and pi antibonding orbital are high energy orbitals and they are excited state orbitals. If we uh, want to see the electronic, if we want to understand the electronic transitions in an organic molecule after absorption of UV visible radiations, one should know different orbitals according to their energy state. So, Bonding sigma orbital with less energy, bonding pi orbital with more energy than the bonding sigma 1, non-bonding n orbital, then the anti-bonding pi orbital and finally anti-bonding sigma orbital. So bonding sigma which is a ground state it has less energy and anti-bonding sigma which is an excited state, it has highest energy. Now, we'll go for the transitions. Sigma electrons from their bonding orbital will jump to their anti-bonding sigma orbital by absorbing UV visible light. And the transition is called as sigma to sigma anti-bonding transition, sigma bonding to sigma anti-bonding transition. Next transition is n electrons will jump from non-bonding n orbital to the anti-bonding sigma orbital and the transition is n non-bonding to sigma anti-bonding transition. Next transition is pi electrons from pi bonding orbital will jump to pi anti-bonding orbital and the transition is pi bonding to pi anti-bonding transition and last transition is n electrons from non-bonding orbital will jump to anti-bonding pi orbital and the transition is n to pi anti-bonding transition. These are the four transitions which are possible when UV visible radiations pass through an organic molecule. If we consider their energy requirement, these transitions are arranged like this one. N to pi antibonding require less energy than the pi to pi antibonding. It will require less energy than sigma N to sigma antibonding and it will require less energy than sigma to sigma antibonding.
इट मीन्स दैट सिग्मा टू सिग्मा एंटी बॉन्डिंग ट्रांजिशन रिक्वायर हाइएस्ट एनर्जी एंड एन टू पाए एंटी बॉन्डिंग ट्रांजिशन विल रिक्वायर लोएस्ट एनर्जी ना विल सी ट्रांजिशन प्रोबेबिलिटी द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ अ पर्टिक्युलर ट्रांजिशन हैज फाउंड हैज बीन फाउंड टू डिपेंड ऑन वैल्यू ऑफ मोलार एक्सटेंशन कोइफिशंट एंड सर्टन अदर फैक्टर्स ना वॉट इज मोलार एक्सटेंशन कोइफिशंट और इमैक्स मोलार एक्सटेंशन कोइफिशंट इज अ इंट्रेंसिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ अ सब्सटन्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सब्सटन्स If the compound is highly complex compound and it has many unsaturation points, many double bonds are there, conjugated system is there, then the molar extinction coefficient or E max is more. And if the molecule is simple saturated one, the E max will be less. According to E max value, the transitions are allowed and forbidden. Allowed transition. allowed transitions in which the emax or molar extinction coefficient value is 10 raised to 4 or uh, 10000 or more than 10000 generally this transition is pi to pi anti bonding transition example is pi to pi anti bonding transition in 13 butadiene this transition in this 13 butadiene it occurs at 1 270 nanometer and its emax value is 21000 and that's why it is a allowed transition forbidden transition the transition with emax value less than 10 raised to 4 generally this transition is n to pi transition because it is a weak transition example n to pi transition in unsaturated aldehydes and ketones this transition is shown at 290 nanometer Uh, it is a forbidden transition because its emax value or molar extinction value is only 100 and that's why it is a forbidden one now we'll see transitions one by one sigma to sigma transition sigma to sigma anti bonding transition as we know sigma electrons are associated with sigma bonds or saturated bonds the compound with only sigma bonds and no heteroatoms in that in the in those compounds sigma to sigma anti bonding transition is shown example is transitions in fully saturated hydrocarbons the energy required for such transition is very large and it takes place only in ultraviolet region not in uv visible region why saturated hydrocarbons can be used as solvent in uv visible spectroscopy the reason is that Uh, the saturated hydrocarbons have sigma to sigma transition which will not occur in uv visible range and that's why saturated hydrocarbons will be transparent in this region and that's why they can be used as solvent n to sigma transition saturated compound with lone pair of electron or saturated compound with heteroatom they will show n to sigma anti bonding transition along with sigma to sigma anti bonding transition the energy required for this transition is less than sigma to sigma transition n to sigma transitions are observed in saturated aliphatic alcohols and saturated alkyl halides etc why n to sigma transition in methyl chloride takes place at 172 175 nanometer while in methyl iodide it takes place at 258 nanometer the reason is that the n electrons of iodine are loosely bound and the n electrons or non uh, the lone pair of electrons of chloride are tightly bound now i i the electrons of iodide will require less energy for excitation and as the energy requirement is less the wavelength will be more that's why methyl in methyl chloride n to sigma transition takes place at 172 to 175 nanometer while in methyl iodide the same transition takes place at 258 nanometer the reason is the energy requirement for transition 
n to sigma transitions are very sensitive to hydrogen bonding and uh, they can shift the uv visible hydrogen bonding can shift uv visible absorption of this transition at to the shorter wavelength now next transition is pi to pi anti bonding transition pi to pi anti bonding transitions occur in any molecule having pi electrons that means a conjugated in a conjugated system or double molecule with double bonds now what is conjugated system conjugated system with means uh, the system with alternate single and double bonds that is single double single double bond like benzene benzene is a conjugated system so pi to pi anti bonding transition occur in any conjugated system or molecule with double bonds like um, in ethylene the lambda max is observed at 174 and 200 nanometer due to pi to pi anti bonding transition more the conjugated system stronger will be the pi to pi anti bonding transition and the lambda max will be at higher wavelength that means how much the system is conjugated or how much double bonds are there or more the double bonds the pi to pi transition will be strong and the wavelength of absorption will be at higher wave longer side or higher side last transition n to pi anti bonding transition n non bonding to pi anti bonding transition this transition is a forbidden transition as we know its emax value is less than 10 to 4 and that's why it is forbidden one the unsaturated molecules with a uh, heteroatom like oxygen nitrogen sulfur or any halide uh, such compound will show n to pi anti bonding trans- transition with pi to pi anti bonding transition this transition occur at longer wavelength uh, the saturated aldehydes and ketones will show both um, pi to pi anti bonding transition and n to pi anti bonding transition along with sigma to sigma anti bonding transition that means saturated aldehydes and ketones will show all these three types of transition now i hope you understand um, uh, you understood the concepts of electronic transition and uh, thank you for watching my video thank you very much